Hi, this is John with uh, Janus Motorcycles here in the service department. Today we're going to do a video uh, showing how to change the valve adjustment on the 250 engines. Um, we had one of these before, but we've changed our, the specs that we're using for a valve adjustment. So we're redoing that with our current specs. The tools that we'll be new, using, I've got laid out here. It's a large screwdriver for removing a cap. We've got a 14 and an 18 sockets. A uh, 10 millimeter wrench. This is, what is the size, a three? Three millimeter. It's what we use for adjusting the tappets. That's a little wrench for that. And some feeler gauges for checking the adjustment. So we're gonna get started here, removing the spark plug. That's an 18 millimeter socket. And I like putting a rag down to put parts on as I'm taking them out. So if I get done and there's still something there, I know I forgot something. Got something else to put back in. So the spark plug we take out so that when you're spinning the engine, it spins over a lot easier. You don't have a compression in there. There are three bolts that hold the valve cover on, two on the right side of the bike, and one on the left side. Got those out. Now I'm going to grab the screwdriver as well. And the 14 millimeter we'll be using on the other side. So I'm going to take these all over here. First, we'll take off the last bolt for the valve cover. Sometimes it uh, has a little bit of a stick to it in there and you have, I just bump it with my heel to get it off, but uh, this one came off real easily. Now we need to remove these two caps. This one enables us to get to the end of the crankshaft so we can turn the engine over. And the top one allows us to view marks on the flywheel so we can tell when we're at top dead center. There is a O-ring. This one, you see it's stuck to the cover here, so we'll peel that off. Just make sure you don't lose those. I put them back on the cap so I have it there when I'm putting it back together. This one also has uh, the O-ring that stayed on that. So at this point, We've got the spark plug out. We'll turn the engine to top dead center. I need to get the socket ratchet drive. And the 14 millimeter socket. And you want to turn this counterclockwise. It's the same direction that the wheel's turning. That's the way the engine turns. So that's the way we'll be turning it. And we'll turn it and what we want to watch for up here is watching the valves open and close so we know uh, where we are in the rotation of the engine. You should turn it until you see the exhaust valve, which is the front one up by the exhaust pipe. We'll see that valve there, it's opening. The push rod pushes up on this and that in turn pushes down on the valve. So the exhaust valve opens and closes and then immediately the intake opens and closes. And then after that, it's uh, I think a little less than 180 degrees, but something like that till we get to top dead center. And we will be looking for, actually, I mean, might need a flashlight to get a little more light. Now we can see in there pretty well. And what we're looking for, we'll first see two 
side-by-side -side marks. Those marks, I believe, are for the, um, where the spark would be at the fast advance. We turn a little farther, and that one, yeah, has an F beside it. It stands for uh, fire, I believe. That's when, uh, like at idle, that's where the spark would be. And right after that, we're coming up on another one with a T beside it. That's top dead center. And we want to line that mark up with this uh, mark there on the, um, on the cover. Now, it's very nice on this bike. These marks are very obvious, easy to see. I have worked on a couple bikes where it was hard to find those. I don't know if they're just not imprinted as well um, on the white wheel, but I have, it's been harder to find them. And I recently worked on one where I could not find them at all. And in that case, what I did, I just, because on the cam, it's not, um, having it exactly at top dead center isn't that important. I mean, that's just where we always do it. That's the standard. That's where you always set it. But there's a broad range there in the, in the rotation of the camshaft. Where the, where the valves are completely closed. And um, so what I did in, this, in the situation where I couldn't find any mark, there were numbers stamped on the flywheel, and I know one owner at least has, has commented on that too, he couldn't find anything. In that case, from the, where the intake valve closes, I do um, a 180 degree turn of the crankshaft. I mean, so if, it's, if the, I have the ratchet here, I will turn it over to here and that's good enough. Um, the valves are completely closed at that point, and that's a, good, that's a fine place for, chain, for checking this. But this one's nice, we can see that, so we know right where we are at top dead center. And now we're gonna go back around to the other side. I'm gonna wipe the oil off of this just so I'm not getting in it and dragging oil all over everything with a clean rag. Okay. Now you should at this point, if the valves are adjusted right, you should get a little bit of a movement in there. You probably can't hear it. I may not even be see it, but, but it is moving. That was exhaust and the intake as well. Those feel like they're pretty good, but we'll give them a check and see where they are. Uh, what I've done for feeler gauges, I get tired of messing with the whole big thing. So those that I use for checking the uh, valve timing, I've put on just a small set. So I've got just the ones that I need here. The exhaust valve clearance, we aim for four thousandths of an inch in clearance on that. Another way to approach it is if you've heard of a uh, stop and go um, method of checking the, the clearance. You would say that a 3,000 slides in real easy and a 5,000 will not fit in. Then you know you're in between there somewhere. And, and that's good enough. You know, then again, with, with uh, valves, it's not like you have to have it right exactly at a setting. Um, so anywhere in between three and five is probably fine. A little bit um, too loose on the loose side is better than having it too tight, as long as you don't get way out of whack. But we'll, I'll try here, see what, what we got at uh, four thousandths. The four thousandths, I mean, it's sliding in there pretty easily. And I will check the five. And the five, five is in there too. So it's, it's just a little bit looser than it should be. It's fine where it is, but I think I'm going to go ahead and, and change that because we want to show you how the adjustments are done anyway. And I used to try to hold the gauge in there while I was adjusting it and holding that in and working, you know, having something on the lock nut and something on there. It just gets hard to do it. So anymore, I set that down. I'll loosen the lock nut, make just a little bit of a change on there, and then I'll recheck it. So. I'm going to loosen this. I'm going to move it just a little bit there. And then tighten it back down and we'll see where we're at. 
Now this is the five thousandths again. And it's, it's, uh, there's enough of a change. That's not sliding in anymore. I can force it in, but it's not just sliding in. And the uh, three thousandths, if you're using the go, no go, three thousandths just slides right in, nice and easy. And the four thousandths to see what that feels like. It goes in, there's a fair amount of drag. So I feel real good about that. Okay, let's look at the intake. Now that, the intake we want to set at three thousandths of an inch. And there again, if you're using a, a go, no go, I'd say two to two and a half on the, on the low side and probably four on the large side. Well, let's start with the three thousandths. And that's very loose. Slides right in. Let's try the four. And there, there's a little bit of a drag. And the five then should probably not fit in at all. It should be too tight. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So again, it's, it's just uh, a little bit on the uh, too much clearance side, so we'll make a little bit of adjustment here as well. Loosen up the lock net. <laughs> Tighten that just a little bit of a turn. Tighten the lock nut back down. Now let's see where we're at. There's a four thousandths. Hopefully that won't slide in anymore. And it won't. The three. Slides in, have a little bit of a drag there. You can see it kind of buckles up when I try to push, but it'll, it'll move. And I have a two and a half, two and a half thousandths. That one I'm hoping will just slide right in there, and it does. So I feel real good about that. Three again, yep. So I think that is good to go. So we're ready to put the cover back on. And if you, with um, these rubber gaskets like this, if you have them in a situation where they're turning, like on a cap, you want to have a little bit of an oil on there to lubricate them. When it's one that's just fitting on and stationary, I generally wipe it down just so we don't have any oil squeezing out after we get it on there keeps a cleaner look and it doesn't it doesn't need to be lubricated to to slide at all so I wipe that down put the bolts back in these are small bolts and they're just going into aluminum head um, you don't need to over torque these at all. Just tighten them down nice and snug. So you feel them come against and just snug them up a little bit past that. The last thing you want to do is strip out the threads in the head. And I've never seen any of these coming loose. So that's good. Now back to the other side. I'm going to loosen the bolts on the other side. This feels like it's not quite lined up. Now these spun out nice and easy, so I was expecting them to spin back in real easily too. Okay. I'll tighten these back down over here. Now we'll replace these caps. There's a little bit of oil on there, so I think that will lubricate those O-rings enough. 
Check again, make sure the O-ring's still there in place. And it doesn't take much to tighten these either, just make sure they're snug. Okay, we're done on that side. Now, we'll put the spark plug back in. Tighten that down. Put the cap back on and you're ready to go. Fire it up and go for a ride.